Did you know that as well as the 10 stock effects we have here in GarageBand iOS, Apple also provides 16 free audio unit extension plugins. And the even better news is they've just had a great new interface update to make them even more usable. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to add in these plugins if you don't already have them. And then we're going to take a quick look at each of the different plugins. There's timestamps down in the description, so feel free to jump around. To check if you have these installed, go to any track in a GarageBand project, go to the mixer icon and tap on plugins and EQ. Hit the edit button and then hit the plus button to add a new effect. Tap on audio unit extensions and scroll to the very bottom and you should see these nice shiny Apple logo plugins. There's 16 of them there. Now, if you don't have them, follow the instructions I'm about to show you now. To enable these if they're not already there, what we need to do is swipe up here and go over to our settings. And from settings, if you scroll down on the left hand side, you'll find GarageBand as one of your options eventually. Tap on GarageBand and then scroll down over here on the right hand side and you'll see this one here, enable iOS effect plugins. If that's not turned on, turn it back on there. And then when you go back to GarageBand, it should have those plugins there. Now, if it doesn't, you may need to close down all of your apps, turn your iPhone or iPad off and back on. But then when you reload it, you should be able to hit the plus button, hit audio unit extensions, and all of these free plugins should be available for you to use. So to demonstrate, I'm going to use my recent song called Work In Progress. Let's grab this lead vocal track. It sounds like this. We're all just a work in progress. Now there's already a bunch of effects on here. So what we'll do is we'll go to the plugins here. We'll go to plugins and EQ and let's just turn off everything here and make it completely clean. And that way we can hit the edit button here and add in each of these effects. And I'll show you a little bit about what they do. So once again, just a refresher to add a plugin, we hit the mixer icon, we hit plugins and EQ, we hit the edit button and then we hit plus. If you don't have any available, you may need to remove another plugin in order to add one in. So we'll add, we'll go audio unit extension. So let's go through these one by one and I'll give you a very quick overview of what each of them do. Let's start with the band pass filter. So we enable that one, we tap on the Apple icon here and here we go. So we can adjust the position of this with this dot here and then we can grab these to expand out. Now what a band pass filter does is it filters out everything but a certain frequency range. So this is great if you want to get that AM radio kind of sound. So if we hit play on our vocal here. We're all just a work in progress. Nobody's got it figured out, yes we're all what you can hear there is when we've got it down here, it's filtering out everything but the bass frequencies. And if we bring it up here, it's filtering out all that bass frequency. So if we want more of a high end sound, we can get an effect like that. And the cool update is we have this nice visualization, whereas previously, if we tap in the bottom right here, this is all we had on the previous version. So being able to actually view and see exactly what we're doing here and have a nice graphical interface is super handy and a great update. Let's hit the edit button here. We will remove that one and let's try our next one. We'll hit plus, audio unit extension, scroll on down. And the next one we have to look at here is the delay. Now there is an echo and a delay plugin already built in. This is just another version. So we we tap on the Apple icon there. This one doesn't have exactly the nicest interface, but it is certainly still better than that one. So what we can adjust here is our dry and wet of our delay, our delay time, the amount of feedback that we have, and our low pass cutoff frequency. So if we adjust all that in there, we can get a nice delay sound on our vocal. Got it figured, Got it figured out. out. That may be a bit too much, but again, you can adjust and play around with that. It's just another option if you want a delay sound on your track. Next up, we have distortion. So this has a delay, ring modulation, and decimation. Now, I went into this in detail. If you click this button here, showing you how to use it with this interface. So the only real change here is this one here. So check the video down in the description if you want to learn about how to use this. But the other cool thing we have in here now is some presets. So if we tap in the bottom left, you've got a bunch of presets that we can add in here. So if we want something a bit interesting like a radio tower effect on here we can go with something like this nobody's got it nobody's got it 
what we want for this song? Probably not, but there's a bunch of options there and you can change that one and adjust it to your heart's content. Next up is the Dynamics Processor. Now, this has got a lot of stuff going on. This has a compressor built in here. It's got some expansion, a bit of an expander going on here, and there's a bunch of things we can play around with and change here. Once again, we've got some presets. So if you want to just use this as a bit of a gate or we want to do some hard or some light compression on this, we can do that or you can adjust them yourself. And again, the change here from this to this makes it just a lot more easy and fun to use. So let's just go with, say, some light compression here and uh, see what this does to our vocal. We're all just a work in progress. Nobody's got it figured out. And the cool thing is that you've actually got indicators here. So instead of before where you just had to guess what was going on, you can actually see the indicators in real time to see what your input and your output and the amount of compression being applied actually is. Our high pass filter has had a nice interface update, which gives you a bit of a better idea of what's actually going on here. So if you've ever wanted to remove out some of that low end, a high pass filter or what should really be called a low cut filter can help. So for instance, if I had some low rumbly noises in this vocal, I might want to set my high pass filter here around about 200 hertz. That way, everything below that's being removed. If we play it, oh, yes, we're all just a work. you're not going to hear much there, but you can also use it as a bit of an effect. So if we bring it right up to the top here is going to remove all of those bass and mids and we'll get something like this. So it can be a handy one to use either to remove that low rumble or as a bit of an effect if you want that radio sounding voice. Next up, the high shelf filter. Now this one works in a similar way, but the opposite. So this is actually going to give us the ability to add in a shelf up the top end here. So these are all of our higher frequencies. And if you want to give your vocal sound or something a bit of a boost, you can use this. Let's play this vocal and we'll uh, add a shelf here and you'll hear the difference. We're all just a work in progress. Nobody's got it figured out. Yes, we're all just a work in Now I've accentuated that because I wanted you to hear the effect there. You wouldn't use it that aggressively, but it can add that little bit of sparkle and sheen to the top of a vocal or maybe even a lead guitar part. So a high shelf can come in handy. Ah, the Pod EQ, probably one of the weirdest ones that we have here. This is legitimately the same EQ that used to come on your iPod and you can actually add this to your track. I don't know why you'd want to, but it's there if you want to. So let's just say we'll go with the vocal booster iPod EQ on this one. What's that going to make our vocal sound like here? We're all just a work in progress. Nobody's got it figured out. Not much. So would you ever use this? Probably not, but it's a bit of fun. Our low pass filter. Yes, it's the exact opposite of a high pass filter. If you wanted to remove out any of those higher sounds, we can do that. So let's hit play on this one. Oh, yes, we're all just a work in progress. Nobody's got it. Now here on a vocal, it's not very useful, but say you had a bass sound that had a little bit of that crackle in there, you wanted to remove that high end, you can use yourself a low pass filter and it's a simple and effective way to get rid of those high frequency sounds. Our low shelf filter, pretty similar. So this is just like our high shelf, except this time it's gonna add a shelf at the low end. So if we play our vocals. Nobody's got it figured out. Nobody's knowing all they can. Now, is this going to be useful for vocals? Again, probably not. But if you had a bass sound that you really just wanted to shelf off there and make sure that real thumping kick or 808 was pumping, then yeah, maybe a low shelf filter is what you need. Next up is the band EQ. Now, while this is super powerful, you can see as I scroll down here, there's a whole lot going on here. You've got up to eight band parametric EQ, but is it the easiest to use EQ in the world? No, because you still have to kind of set it in here and you've got a whole bunch of different things you can use it for. You can use it with like parametric and Butterworth and all sorts of other ones, but you've got to manually set in your frequency and your gain here. Personally, I would prefer to use something like LRC5 or LRC7, some sort of parametric EQ where you can actually visualize it and see the changes that you're making. But it's an EQ. You can adjust it. You can add your different uh, different groups here and you can bypass and you can do all the things that you do with a parametric EQ. The interface is improved, but uh, it's better than that, but it's still not fantastic. So I probably wouldn't use it, but it's nice to know that it's there. The AU New Pitch plugin. Now this is one that's been around for a little while and it hasn't really had much of an update. This is what we used to have here. And this is what we got now. So you can use this to change by a number of cents here. You've got an overlap function here. 
it, it, it does an okay job, but it's not the best way to change it. If we just do this, let's just do a quick pitch change, shall we? If we wanted to make my vocal a little bit higher pitched, we can do something like this and then... Roll, just a work in progress. Nobody's got to figure it out. Yes, we're up. So it is as advertised. It does add a little bit of artifacting in there, so it's not the greatest quality sound, but it's fun to play around with. And if you just needed to tweak a sound up by a few cents or down by a few cents, you can go ahead and use your new pitch plugin. Now, the parametric EQ is what that band EQ should be because it does allow you to adjust both the Q setting here, so how wide that is of our Q, and then also the frequency that we're boosting or cutting. And we can use this if we play our audio back. Nobody's got it figured out. Yes, we're all just a work in progress. You can use it to notch out bits that you don't like. You can use it to boost and enhance bits you do like, but it's only one band, and that's the main problem that we have with this one. So if you wanted to use multiple instances of this, you could, but again, you might as well use something like LR LRC5 or LRC7, and there's a link to those particular plugins down in the description. Now, an audio unit plugin from Apple that I do actually use quite a lot, especially when I'm mastering, is this one, the AU Peak Limiter. Now, unfortunately, it hasn't had much of an upgrade. It does look better than the old version, which looked like this, uh, but it's the same controls. There's just a slightly better look there. What you do get, however, is your limiting amount display here, which can be very useful when you're trying to do this. So let's just uh, use this vocal again, and we'll dial in some pregain, and we'll see if we can get some limiting going on here. Nobody's got it figured out. Yes, we're all just a work in progress. Nobody's got it. Nobody's got it figured out. So there, you can see that with that meter there, you can see how much it's actually flattening down the top there. And again, if you want to learn how to use the AU Peak Limiter on an entire mix or to master in GarageBand iOS, it's a pretty handy little plugin and there's videos down in the description. Okay, here's something new. The AU Pitch plugin was not available in iOS before, but it is now. And check this one out. There's a lot going on here. The problem is, it's using the old interface. So what am I hoping with this? Well, I hope this means that they are gonna add in the pitch plugin in the future, because you can see here, there's a lot of different things we can change here. It is not a user-friendly one, and it doesn't have a whole lot in the way of plugins down here. Universal, complex, and percussive doesn't really tell us much or what we're actually doing here. I've played around with it. If we just play my vocal with this attached. Roll, just a work in progress. Nobody's got it fixed. What is this doing? Is it a pitch correction? is it auto-tune it probably is given that that's kind of what it does in the mac version but without a whole lot of control over this i'm not sure how useful it's going to be i'll dive into this in a future video and especially if we get an interface update then it may become more useful but hey it's the first new plugin that apple have added in in a very long time so that's got to be a good sign Next up in our list, the Reverb 2. Now, why do you need this when you have the Reverb, the regular Reverb 1? Well, it's kind of got some more in-depth options in here. So we do have a dry wet mix knob here to start with. You've got your gain slider there. You've got your minimum and maximum delay times there. You've got your low frequency delay, high frequency delay, and randomized reflections that you can add in here, which is kind of cool. The other good thing we have is a bunch of presets. So we can just come in here and throw in, let's just say we wanted a large hall sound here. It'll dial in all of your settings. And then if we hit play. Nobody's got it figured out. Yes, we're all just a work in progress. And we can adjust all of the different things that we want to there in the reverb plugin. So a handy additional option if you're adding reverb in your tracks. And last but not least, okay, it's kind of least, is the sample delay plugin. This is really not that useful. And it wasn't useful when it looked like this. And it's not super useful when it looks like this. There's a few things you can use to, this for. And I've actually showed it in a previous one to thicken your vocals. You can just delay it out a little bit. But really, all this is doing is adding a slight delay by a few samples to your sound. So you could use this as a bit of a makeshift delay. Or again, you can use it to thicken up vocals. I've shown that before. And that video will be linked down in the description. So uh, sorry to save the probably boringest one till last but there you go that's your sample delay if you've got questions or comments or any insights about these plugins feel free to drop a comment down below hit that like button if you found this useful and if you're happy to see something new from apple here in garage man keep creating folks and i'll see you next time